the human auditory pain threshold is about 130 decibels. Hey, you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? That's about on par with a pneumatic jackhammer. 140 decibels is fireworks. 150 decibels is artillery fire. Fire! 160 decibels is the volume of the cell phone of the guy sitting in front of you at the movie theater. Totally, I'm just walking into a movie, it's all good. A flashbang stun grenade is about 170 decibels. Which is about on par with sticking your head in a jet engine. Although, should you find your head in a jet engine, the sound is probably the least of your problems. The flash of the bang is about a million candle power, which is the equivalent of about a million candles. Or one really big one. Or your head in that jet engine. This is Deep Bias Stun Grenade. Running on CO2, this thing is about 110 decibels. And it's about as bright as uh, however much light is already in the room. Or, you know, slightly less because it's uh, black. <laughs> The point of a flashbang grenade. To sensory disorientation by the overstimulation of the nervous system via the luminous overexposure of retinal tissue and the auditory overload of the tympanic membrane. Oh! Boomy boomy bad thing go bang make hurty hurty. So, how does this thing work? Well, pay attention, because I'm only going to do this once. So here we go, pay attention now. Pin comes out, the lever goes up, out. Okay, so that went off a little pants shatteringly soon. But you'll be pleased to hear that this can actually be tuned to a shorter, I don't know why, or longer fuse. So, you know, it can actually achieve a result which doesn't deafen yourself. Here we are, the Deep Fire Stun Grenade assembly video. So we will start with the installation of the phonation slice, which is just a glorified plastic disc. It bursts, allowing the sound to be spiked. So we turn the housing upside down. In the bottom where the metal ring is, we place the phonation slice in place. Then we take the locking bottom ring, which slots out, and screw it in. We take the tightening key to finish it off. It is important to recognize that this should be tight, but not tightened all the way. If it's too tight, the plastic disc won't actually slip out, and you'll probably just jam the gas flow. That's about right. So the slice is now installed. So now we move on to the core of the grenade. The first thing we need to do is to install the spoon lever and the pin onto the core. The lever has a pair of hooks, which catch onto the top, like so. When placed down, under spring tension, now the holes will line up. We take the pin and place it in the hole. Now the core is assembled and ready to be gassed. In this instance, we are using a Madball CO2 charger with CO2 capsules. We are using the full pressure of the capsule of about 1200 PSI, which is about right for this device. Taking the grenade, we invert it. We gas it up on the valve, just like we would a reservoir. Now this device is gassed. We do point out that the reservoir on this device is very thirsty. This capsule is good for about two or three charges, with each successive charge getting weaker. The final step, very simple, implanting the core into the housing. And this is as simple as screwing on a bottle cap. 
The grenade is now good to go. The grenade comes packaged with 10 phonation slices and costs 57 US dollars. Phonation slices are available for separate purchase in packs of 15 for $4.50. We call this the splashy test. We shall be holding the grenade, pointing down about one and a half feet away from the plastic cup of water to see the effect it has. You can see the shockwave result from that distance. We repeat the test at point blank range to show sheer power and because it's really cool. Here's the test again with a stabilized mat. Having just used your grenade, we make these maintenance notes. With the pin lever removed after the grenade detonation, when you have time, unscrew the grenade to extract the cork. In the middle of the thinner stem, unscrew. This will open up the core itself. With the core opened up, inside the larger bottom end of the core, there's an O-ring sitting inside the groove. During detonation with CO2, 9 out of 10 times, this O-ring will dislodge. This isn't a problem, you just have to make sure to open up the grenade and push the O-ring back into place before you use it again. Also, while we're here, on the upper part of the core, this pin here is actually a screw. This is the timing tweaker. You turn it clockwise, to add more time to the detonation. You turn it anti-clockwise to reduce the time before detonation. This is the Mad Bull Stun Grenade. I've been Arclight of Red Wolf Airsoft. For this interesting product and many more, check out our website at www.redwolfairsoft.com.